right now let us get away from power outages let us get away from all of that and speak about food and bring in arthur schwartz good morning arthur good morning i i had no idea you were so outaged oh it's just horrible it's just horrible the power company never learned anything from the last disaster we had and uh, they made all the same mistakes again it's what, what can you do what can you do you can cook outside. Yeah, well, it's exactly right. <laughs> I'm finding, uh, you know, this is my whole life, but I complain a lot about I can't cook in the summer because of the heat. But there's so many other outside anxieties. I need to cook just to get my mind off of the other anxieties. So uh, I've been, you know, really cooking in the sense that, uh, let me just say, a young friend of mine asked me, in my kitchen, hanging out, uh, asked me, do you ever just cook and not cook from a recipe? And I said, yes, but they're my recipes. I, I Meaning, I sometimes follow a recipe that I, I have. On the other hand, when I'm not cooking from a recipe, I'm thinking to the point like I'm going to be on this program on Monday morning where, or whatever, where I need to communicate that recipe. So I need to test it. Um, anyway, where was I going with this? Um, I'm not sure. So, you know, I am sure. So I, I cooked, uh, as I said I was going to. I made pasta la norma last week, and, and that's a, a in, in, the, in my case, I made it with spaghetti, but there are other pastas you can use. Uh, uh, a spaghetti alla norma, which is a tomato sauce with fried eggplant and ricotta salata cheese, which it is really ricotta compressed and salted into a cheese that you can grate or slice. But it's soft and it's melty. Uh, if you, as I do, I put some of it into the sauce and it creams up the sauce a little bit, and then I put more on top. Anyway, I didn't need all the eggplant uh, that I had, so I had a hunk of eggplant in the fridge, two medium zucchini. Um, I've, of course, I always have onions, and I had just bought um, some red peppers. Now, this is red pepper season, so I'm very happy. I'm going to cook all my red pepper recipes this week and next week, even if it's a heat wave, which it will be, uh, because I'd rather ha eat hot pe uh, eat eat red peppers uh, 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 and perspire uh, than not eat red peppers. So there's so many ways I do them, but I took one of these red peppers, combined it with those other vegetables, and made something that Southern Italians call chanfotta. C-I-A-N-F-O-T-T-A, -T -T or Chamfotta, with an M, C-I-A-M. Actually, there are a lot of different ways to pronounce this word, depending on where you come from in the south of Italy, meaning Calabria, Basilicata, Campania, which is the region around Naples, the Amalfi Coast is in that region, uh, 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 Puglia. Everywhere in the south, they make red peppers and other vegetables in something resembling champota, a word resembling champota. So, by the way, I, I've, I know Italian-Americans who you use this word, but they claim that it comes from a vulgar, John did something, vulgar, uh, champota, use your imagination. Yeah, okay. So, <laughs> So, but I don't. I doubt that story. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good story anyway. <laughs> it, yeah, yeah. You know, add a little juice to the whole thing. So there's there are as many ways to make chambota as there are cooks, as they you know say about these things. And I always think I I didn't even reread my own recipe for this in Naples at Table, which is after all published twenty something years ago. Um, don't want to think about that. And uh, in 25 years, I've made champot in many ways. 
But I, I do remember the story because I, I remember this woman vividly. She's passed on since 1994-ish when I met her. She said, because she was famous for her chambota. So I asked her, you know, well, what do you do? She said, well, wait until my children are out of the room. Her daughter was an anesthesiologist, and her, I forget what, I think her, her son-in-law was a cardiologist. And they lived right outside Salerno. So, in the province of Salerno. Um, anyway, um, she said, when they go out of the room. So why she was waiting for them to go out of the room, she says, it's very unhealthy, and they wouldn't approve of the way I make it. Which is, each vegetable gets fried separately in a different fat. And then they're all combined together in one pan with some tomatoes and stewed a little longer. Uh, I understood the um, deliciousness factor here. <laughs> and I also understood the, this is not so healthy for you, Mama, <laughs> the facet of this too. And truthfully, I don't want that taste in my chamfot. And I'm very happy to make it just with olive oil. So, and I, you know, it's one of those things I don't need a recipe for. And in this case, I just used what I had, uh, this leftover eggplant, two zucchini that needed to be eaten. They were still very fresh, but um, I, 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 I bought a, four of them, and I needed to use these two. And so what I did was I took a large onion and uh, started sautéing it uh, in... I, I would say I probably used a quarter of a cup of olive oil. You don't want to be stingy on the olive oil. You're going to use a lot of vegetables in the end, and this is going to feed a lot of people. So, uh, you know, enough to cover the bottom of a 10-inch, what I call sauté pan, a deep skillet with a cover. Uh, mine's a straight-sided. A sauté pan is truthfully a straight-sided pan with a cover. And used for making like chicken sautés, where you brown the chicken and then add a liquid and cover it. Um, anyway, uh, I do that, and I, I get the onion started on sort of lowish heat. And I make this into a process. I don't I don't prep all the vegetables and put them in blah blah blah. But I do want to add them to the pan in the order that they'll cook more or less the same in the end, and all be tender and nice in the end. So I, the next thing I put in is uh, the the red pepper. I had one red pepper, one big onion, one red pepper, and I uh, diced it half inch dice, even two, even three quarter inch dice, not little pieces, a nice cube of pepper. So I cut them into strips and then crosswise. Um, add that to the pan with the onion, stir it around, sprinkle it with salt, stir it around again and uh, let it cook still on medium-low heat or medium heat uh, while you cut up the eggplant. I must have had about three-quarters of a pound of eggplant. I, 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 I'm estimating here, but in the end, maybe it was two cups when I cut it into one-inch cubes. Put your cubes of eggplant into, in with the onion and peppers, and stir that around, and now you can increase the heat a little bit. Uh, the eggplant takes a while to cook. So cook this, the eggplant, the peppers, the onions all together, I would say mm, at least seven or eight minutes over medium, medium high heat, stirring it around so that the eggplant gets cooked on all sides. Don't worry about the peppers and onions, they'll, they'll do it themselves. Um, then, uh, after that, add the zucchini. I, I cut the zucchini in, in half and then quarters and then uh, crosswise into, I would say, three-quarter inch chunks. And I put that in the pan. And I sauteed that for another five minutes or so, stirring it around. Um, and finally, I added a half a 28-ounce can of tomatoes, a re really good canned tomatoes. Now, it's fresh tomato season. Why am I using canned tomatoes? Well, I could use fresh tomatoes. I didn't have any in the house when I was trying to, when I was putting this together. 
and I wasn't leaving the house to buy a can uh, to buy fresh tomatoes. That would you know be iffy anyway. Uh, yeah, you can get really good tomatoes at this time of the year, but still, I like the texture that a canned tomato, a good San Marzano packed in puree tomato, uh, uh, gives this dish and many other dishes as well. Um, I won't say I prefer canned tomato sauce to fresh tomato sauce, uh, but they're two different things to me. They're just like it's a different animal. And I have no prejudice against canned tomatoes. I once taught a cooking class at, uh, I think it's called ICE now, uh, the uh, International Culinary but uh, anyway, uh, and uh, they were very disdainful of the fact that I was using canned tomatoes. Students, 18-year-olds, were disdainful <laughs> because they didn't know any better. To fresh is not always better. Anyway, uh, so I put in a half a can. I crush the – I like to do this. I crush the tomatoes in my fist as I added them to the pan. If you don't like to do that, just put them in a bowl and mash them with a potato masher or put them in the pan uh, or push push the vegetables aside for a minute and put the tomatoes uh, on the part you've cleared and break them up with the side of your spoon. I also have a, a, a wooden, uh, I don't know, I guess you have to call it a spatula, but it's wood, and it, it has an edge it's perfect for breaking up tomatoes. If you ever see one of those in a store, I would buy it. I've had actually, I have several of these, but this, I have one favorite in particular that's been with me for a good 25 years. You know, I attached, I get to my tools. So uh, that's it. Uh, you're going to want to add salt and pepper. Uh, you could add hot pepper if you like. Uh, my audience doesn't like, so I put black pepper in. And uh, you can always add hot pepper at the table if you like. And it's just delicious as it is, but you need some kind of starch, I always think. So, in fact, one of my inspirations for making champota was that we had some spectacular bread in the house. Uh, I, I happened to go by a bakery that was open, and uh, which thrilled me because not many things are open around here. Uh, big markets are open. Um, and uh, I didn't know this place was open. And they have spectacular whole wheat baguettes, but also brioche that it's like, you know, when Marie Antoinette said, let them eat cake, she was thinking of this brioche. Anyway, um, so we needed something to mop up all these delicious vegetable juices. By the way, it took a good 20 minutes, could have been a half an hour of simmering with the cover on. Um, you know, pop, 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 you know, not, not occasional pucking, but a regular steady low simmer, um, and stirred a couple times and it shouldn't take more than 20 minutes or so. Zucchini gets done quicker than you think, but being amongst the acid of tomatoes, um, could take vegetables a little longer to cook. And by the way, this is delicious the next day. Or that, or made ahead for several days, if you want to make a lot of it. Um, but you get tired of it, so don't make too much. And it doesn't freeze well. Vegetables get very mushy. I don't like it. So uh, 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 it's very good with pasta. Um, it's even, I would think, really good on rice. If you're a rice person, uh, this is a good vegetable topping to put on on just plain boiled rice. Anyway, champota. The other thing that I make with red peppers, by the way, of course, this is the height of the season for red peppers, eggplant, zucchini, tomatoes. So these are all the things we think about when we think of the food of the south of Italy or the Mediterranean in general. And, you know, whether you're cooking... Uh, uh, North African food or Southern Italian food, these are the ingredients that are piled high at the markets. 
and they are here too. So I always enjoy going to the market when these things are piled high. The other thing I like to make is peperonata. So I actually bought all these peppers. I bought four big peppers. One I used for the ciambotta, and the other three I made peperonata. Now that's just stewed peppers. And again, you know, every cook's got a different way of doing it, more or less different. Um, and I do it. I did three, these three big peppers, one biggish onion, and the rest of that can of tomatoes. I had to open up a 28 ounce can of tomatoes um, to make the chambot. I used the other half to make the peperonata. So in this case, I, uh, uh, you, you're going to saute the onion and pepper together in olive oil. And I told you three peppers to one big onion. But you can alter that if you want. Um, I like a lot of onion. You could use a medium onion. Uh, and, and you saute those together in a good amount of olive oil, uh, sprinkled with some salt, and just do five minutes of tossing them around in medium-high olive oil, and then add the rest of that can of tomatoes. It's a, you know, if you, have, if you do have small cans of tomatoes, hard to come by these days, you could use a 14-ounce can of tomatoes, uh, meaning good, good Italian tomatoes. You could do this, of course, with American-style diced tomatoes. I tried those fire-roasted tomatoes fairly recently. It's okay, but it's a different taste. So um, I like the pulpiness of San Marzano. Anyway, you, st you stew the peppers for a good 20 minutes or half an hour. It's a mainly a pepper stew, so don't overdo the onion. And, of course, did I say salt and black pepper? And in this case, or in either case, truly, you could add potatoes. I, I, I was looking at Chamfota recipes on the Internet and saw that it really be. In, I guess, U.S., this is a very American thing. Uh, it became a catch-all for a, a lot of different vegetables that, to me, don't belong in champota. But one of the, let's say, factors that go in, went into the development of con even contemporary Southern Italian cooking is the concept of frugalness and using very few ingredients. <clears throat> to get a, a good result. So uh, you think, think parsimonious. By the way, both of these dishes can get an herb. The chamfotta, um, which we ate with the bread, um, uh, 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 was wonderful. We had just had some chopped parsley on the top. Uh, the peperonata, uh, I, I secured some basil. However, I have b become a mintaholic, uh, but not, not, not in sweet dishes. I love mint in savory things. And if I'm short, uh, an, a fresh herb, meaning there's nothing in my fridge, I am now apt to use dried mint um, instead of dried oregano. Uh, uh, not in every case. With fish, I still want oregano. But with vegetable dishes, I'm happy to have mint. And um, I was even tempted. I made some pasta and peas yesterday. I was tempted to add mint to that, too, which is a traditional um, Anglo combination, peas and mint. But um, I restrained myself because there was enough flavor in there from what I had in there. Anyway, a lot of butter. So, uh, and peas and pancetta, don't ask. Um, so, what else? So peperonata uh, also can go on pasta. I, I, I would use macaroni. I would not use spaghetti for either of these. If you wanted chamfotta with pasta, you know, rigatoni is a good one. Well, tubes are good. Uh, tortiglioni, I just bought something called tortiglioni, but they're really just ridged ziti. Ziti is good. Penne is good. So I like those tubular macaronis, uh, not a long pasta. But I love potatoes with these things, too. And you could 
<coughs> cooked in the case of the peperonata, which is going to cook for half an hour, potatoes also seize up in, in an acid environment. Um, but if you peel and cube the potatoes, say one inch cubes, you don't want to make it too much smaller, um, and add it to the um, champota or the peperonata uh, uh, just before the tomatoes and toss them around with the other vegetables. In, in 20 minutes to a half an hour, the potatoes should be just tender. You don't want them falling apart. I, I, I would use like one large Idaho or better. I usually have uh, Yukons in the, uh, in the house. So maybe like two for for a big pot of pepperonata, 12 ounces of Yukon gold. That would be like two medium potatoes. So I this week I also did a little experiment to see uh, how much oil I was going to use up frying eggplant without pre-salting it. And uh, I didn't really measure how much oil I used up, but as I've written, including in Naples a table, and I'm sure in Southern Italian table too, the, if you use a lot of oil to fry eggplant, it actually absorbs less oil. It's only when you try to saute it, so to speak, in a small amount of oil that it absorbs everything, and you better have a nose stick pan there. But with a quarter of an inch of oil, I ended up in the end with almost a quarter of an inch of oil. And then I put my fried eggplant on paper towel, and it absorbed a lot more oil. So in the end, I don't think my actual eggplant was very fatty. This is when I made pasta alla norma. Um, and I did the same thing with slices. So I have also baked eggplant and broiled eggplant with only brushing it with olive oil. And actually, I think I use up as much oil doing that as I do frying. So you got, if you have, you know, for me, it's a choice. Do I want to do it on top of the stove or in the oven? I actually enjoy frying. To me, it's very contemplative because you really have to pay close attention when you're frying. And you're dealing with very hot oil that could really kill you. So that's a little danger added. And there's, it's a skill. It's a skill. Um, in, in the south of Italy, in Salerno in particular, we know a lady. I, don't, I think she's passed on. <clears throat> she, you know, I got to think how old I am when I think about how old those uh, <laughs> my elders would be. So I'm old. I'm as old as she was when I met her 20 years ago. But you know, in the South, they can people do live in, well into their 90s. So she could she could be close to 100 by now. Anyway, point is, she was known all over her province as the Fry Lady. Uh, because for, I don't know, 40 years, she stood by a fryer in her family's restaurant and made the most amazing fried foods of every kind. In the end, from standing by the fryer all those years, um, she couldn't really stand for very long. I'm talking about when I met her 25 years ago, oh, more than that. Um, and uh, uh, she couldn't stand very well. So she would sit in the lobby of the – or the the reception area. It was a hotel with a restaurant downstairs. She would sit in the reception area of the hotel slash entrance to the restaurant and greet people in her wheelchair covered in blankets to cover her legs, which were always cold. Sometimes in the winter she would actually have an electric heater uh, on her legs. The Fry Lady. The Fry Lady. Well, did, 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 so as long as I can stand and fry, I figure I'm okay. Now, I have to ask you a question about frying. Yeah. I saw the most stupid thing uh, posted on Facebook, an advertisement. It says new, uh, and it's a frying pot, okay? Yeah. But it's small. And it, with the frying pot, they they claim that, uh, you know, you, you, 
it makes it easier, and it's like a forty-nine dollar item. You don't need. Wait, a... is this the one? Because I got uh, uh, this advertisement ended up on my internet feed somehow. Is this the one that has like a rack on the cover? Yeah, yeah. And they they show yeah. It's, it's only fifty bucks. Yeah, yeah, but it's it's stupid because if you have a rack at your house and you have a. a, a a, a, a nice bowl to fry in. You don't need this extra thing for fifty bucks. You know? No, I you know I actually think of it in a different way. I think of it where would I put it? <laughs> so <laughs> that that's my main concern. If it, you know, I do have in the closet and a, a a deep fat electric deep fat fryer, which has a thermostat, and that's the only good part of it is that it has a thermostat. <laughs> Uh, because it doesn't go above 375, and I don't know. I, I did use it for a, quite a while, but it's been up in the closet for also quite a while, and maybe I should trade it out, because that one looked pretty nice, actually. Yeah, but it's small. It's small. Well, none of them are big, Marshall. Yeah. Mine isn't very big either, but, you know, I do, I don't know. It's just I, easy I, Did I report that I made my own potato chips recently? Well, I think I did. Yes. Yeah, but, so I, you know, I wouldn't mind a little deep fat fryer to do potato chips. There's well, nothing like a homemade potato chip. There isn't. My grandmother used to make those, uh, uh, those you know, by, by slicing potatoes really thin. And, yeah, I did know, it on the mandolin. Yeah, yeah. And, and it took, you know, no time at all. And one big Idaho potato was enough for the two of us. Fried. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's, it's <laughs> no, it's amazing how how many chips you can make out of them. It really oh, a is. lot. We ate too many, and it was you know it probably would have gone for three people, three normal people. Well, that's the bad thing about when you make the food and it comes out and it's, and it's hot and they're crispy, you can't stop eating them. Well, you know what? These were good even when they weren't hot. <laughs> <laughs> My problem, I liked them quite a lot. Bob thought they had a bitter edge. Now, of course, I used absolutely fresh oil, so I know it wasn't the oil. And I think what happened was in my uh, eagerness to get a really crisp chip, I over-fried them a little bit. And I, I'm not sensitive to bitter, so they didn't taste bitter to me. But he's, he's super sensitive to bitter. So I think, and I'm, now that I've, I've examined some commercial potato chips, and I find they are blonder than mine were. So I think next time around, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna trust that they'll be crisp, even mm. though they're not looking crisp. All right. Well, with that being said, I'll report on that too. All right, and hopefully. In the we'll meantime, I'm into, I'm into frying eggplant. Mm. <laughs> right. Well, hopefully next week when we speak to you, we'll have power. <laughs> uh, well, you don't need you do gas. Do you have gas? Oh, I'm not, my house is. I, I went to all gas stuff. Yeah, when I had the last power outage. Yep. There's gas at my house, and there's also a generator at my house, just like there's a generator uh, here. You need a generator. Hey, for exactly things like this. <laughs> and they happen frequently. Unfortunately, up here they do. <laughs> yeah, where you are, they do, I know. All right, well, have a good week, Arthur. Uh, you too. Well, Staten Island is out, if that makes you any, feel any better. I mean, my, my friends on Staten Island told me they weren't getting any help till today, and they've been out since last week, too. Uh, it makes, that's, that's the a, city of New York. Shame, shame, shame. Shame, shame, shame. All right, Arthur, we'll speak to you next week. Take care. Take care. Arthur Schwartz, the food maven, here on Robin Hood Radio on The Breakfast Club. Underwriting support for Arthur Schwartz, the food maven, John Andrews Restaurant on the Hillsdale Road in South Egremont, 413-528-3467, on the web, jarestaurant.com. Rubiner's Cheesemongers and Grocers on Main Street in Great Barrington, 413-528-0488, rubiner's.com. Hillsdale Home Chef, more information, 518-325-7000, hgshomechef.com.